On March the 2nd, 2010, Battlefield Bad Company 2 launched into the gaming world, and this was the second game in the spin-off series that put more emphasis on linearity, infantry gameplay and destruction, and perhaps it set the franchise on the course that it remains on today. Eight years later, however, does the game still shine as brightly as it did back then? Let's find out. Now, the gaming world has really shifted in focus since the time of Bad Company 2's release. We've moved away from this era where games could just come out with its launch content and then exist as their own experience, and we're now in a world where products must be constantly evolving, they've always got to be updated, they've always got to be changing and offering new experiences, and in general they've got to be moving forwards all of the time. And in that aspect, you can look at Bad Company 2 as a very static product. But that doesn't mean it didn't do some great things along the way. If any of you played Bad Company 2 on the PS3 or the Xbox 360, I was a PS3 player back in the day, you might have been familiar with the VIP program that was run for this game. Essentially, this program gave you access to all of the DLC for that title that was planned for free rather than needing to purchase anything other than the game to play all of the content. If you bought a pre-owned copy, then you wouldn't get this luxury, however, and I think at the time that was EA's way of guaranteeing revenue when pre-owned game shops were just huge players in the market. I hardly see any of those around these days. It's all about online and downloading now. That said, the system meant that all VIP map packs that were released came out for free for players who bought their brand new copy. PC players, they got updates for free regardless at that time. I'm not 100% sure why that was. It may be because the game was developed on PC and they just gave them out for free. Not 100% sure. The only DLC outside of this system was the Vietnam expansion, and I'd say 100% looking back at it now, this deserved to be its own paid DLC. This expansion completely converted the game with an updated UI look, we got five new maps built from the ground up, new weapons, vehicles, and even more. The entire expansion perhaps represents now what we look at Battlefield's current DLCs to actually be like. Rather than the VIP map packs of Bad Company 2, they were made to bring new game modes to existing maps, or to bring existing maps from the single player into the multiplayer. The Vietnam expansion was probably one of the most surprising additions to the franchise, and one of the most well executed. It gave the game a new lease of life when it just about needed it, things were rolling towards the announcement and launch of Battlefield 3. In terms of appearance and general gameplay, Bad Company 2 really has stood the test of time in my opinion. You could argue that Bad Company 2 today still rivals many titles that are coming out in terms of graphical fidelity, but I will say that when it comes to gameplay, your soldier movement and overall control, the cracks are starting to show somewhat. The fact on PC that you cannot strafe while running, but you can when crouched is a little bit of an oddity, and not being able to vault or climb over cover is certainly jarring. But that's likely because we've been spoilt by current Battlefield titles, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1, and especially Battlefield 1. We've got the crouch slide, the pull-up animations, and overall an extremely slick movement system now in 2018. Bad Company 2 by today's standards is certainly playable and it's still really, really fun, but it requires a certain amount of rollback on expectations. Other elements and workarounds need to be employed to overcome the aging movement system. So instead of looking to vault over that small wall in front of you, switch to your grenade launcher and just smash it open. If you want to jump through a window to catch an enemy by surprise, then you're going to be stuck scratching your head again. It's probably just best you smash that wall out in front of you. And the same goes for doors. You can't open and close them like you can in Battlefield 1, and if you want them gone, you can melee them and they'll shatter, but that's really quite anticlimactic, so once again, whip out your grenade launcher and just smash the door away. It's a much more appealing option. So while soldier movement and soldier gameplay certainly comes from a different time in Bad Company 2, there's still plenty of ways to work yourself around situations and give you the advantage again. 
And just there, speaking of destruction, I think we all know that Bad Company 2 had that by the bucket load. Now, I'd argue since this title that the franchise has taken somewhat of a step back on destruction. Battlefield 3 focused more on urban combat and therefore perhaps reducing destruction in favour of consistent gameplay. However, Battlefield 4 and Hardline decided to replace that dynamic destruction almost completely with set piece destruction, a move that most players in the community didn't really like, and I'll never forget the Levolution marketing for that game. And Battlefield 1 has restored some of that more destructive time, but arguably the game lacks the gadgets to really take advantage of what's on offer. Bad Company 2 made it extremely simple for a player to destroy things and made it very clear what could be destroyed and what couldn't, and mainly that's because almost everything in this game was destructible. Now, having all this destruction here makes for a great gameplay experience in some ways, but overall, I think Bad Company 2 suffered with a degradation in gameplay as rounds wore on, or indeed, as the game grew older. You're now going to struggle to play a round of Isla Innocente's Rush without the defending team removing almost all the trees on the hill as you move towards the final MCOM base. And that leaves the attacker zero cover to use as they try and defend themselves from the defending chopper that spawns at the base. Back in 2010, at the launch of the game, you could say that players didn't have the knowledge to really use these kind of tactics, but if you try and play the game in 2018, this is an almost every round occurrence. The design of the maps, I think, relied heavily on the use of destructible cover, and really, each round that was played, the outcome was at the mercy of the teams as to whether they destroyed all the things on the map, or whether they left some things standing. If all the things were destroyed, usually, rounds would descend into a stalemate, two lines of teams making small advances forward, dying, and then respawning again, although this was more of an issue on the rush maps than it was on the conquest ones. The the linearity of many of the maps in Bad Company 2 and the amount of destructible cover often meant that huge lines of sight would open up for each team to look down, and we all know how rounds like that end up being decided. It just descends into sniper town. When you compare Bad Company 2's destruction to what we have on offer now in Battlefield 1, I'd have to say that from a gameplay standpoint, Battlefield 1 offers the better destructive experience because games can still keep flowing and moving once things start to disappear. Some cover is not destructible and house shells, they remain intact, giving each team at least a chance to hide from the battle and think about their next move. Whereas Bad Company 2, it just descends into chaos after the first few minutes. I'm not saying that isn't fun, but the destruction has been honed and changed over the years into a far better design that respects map flow and gameplay more now than what it did in Bad Company 2. And then you have to look at what the game offers in terms of progression and sustain. What can you do in Bad Company 2 to keep you entertained? Well, by today's standards, almost nothing. It does follow a very similar system to what we've seen in more recent titles, like Battlefield 4, where the more you play, the more you unlock, but besides a basic soldier rank and class XP, there's very little outside that players can do to progress and further their experience besides the core gameplay loop. The main soldier rank allows you to unlock items for your soldier that are relevant to all of the classes, and the class XP you gain allows you to unlock weapons and gadgets specific to each class. And that's about it. Max soldier rank is 50, general of the army, but the last item you unlock through the soldier ranking system is at rank 22, and that's the G3 rifle. And I think then that Bad Company 2 proves that an engaging and enjoyable gameplay loop back in 2010 and 2011 was enough to keep players of first-person shooter games entertained for hours and hours at a time. I logged 1,200 hours in the game myself on the PS3, and now a further 130 hours on the PC as well. I can still attest to that rather addictive gameplay loop. 
So, in summary, I'd have to say that yes, Bad Company 2 has stood the test of time, but it really is starting to show its age. On PC, on the Steam platform, you can still find the game pulling in just shy of 1,000 players at peak times, which is plenty enough to play some rounds of Rush on some of the best linear maps that have ever been created for the Battlefield franchise. So if you want to experience the game once again, I'd say that PC is probably your best platform. For consoles, I can't really comment as there's nowhere that really logs stats for the game, but considering the title is backwards compatible on the Xbox One, you might be able to find a few servers or at least experience a great single player campaign. Bad Company 2 is still a great game and it's one I'm going to continue to play until such a time that the servers just no longer work for it. I'd still have to say that to this day, Bad Company 2 is my favourite Battlefield game. But there you go. Thanks very much for watching today. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Do you like Bad Company 2? Do you not like it? Did you never get to experience it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section and I'll be down there reading just as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.